Emma. Hello, hello. All right, let's see if I get a notification. Oh, I did. Let's turn my annoying voice off. All right, let's see if somebody pops in and then when Trina pops in, I'm just gonna add her to the live and hopefully it works. If anybody is in and you can hear me, can you just tap the thumbs up? Hi, Shay. Hi, Lori. Can you hear me? Yes, no, maybe so. And I don't know how much of a delay we're gonna have either because we're gonna have a split screen. So who knows? It is after hours for us, so. Thank you, Tina. So nobody is here and I'm hoping that helps get me all the Wi-Fi. <laughs> Hi, Olga. Let me share to our groups and I'll share to Trina's group. Okay. I sprinkled to the usual peeps. And as soon as I see Trina pop on, or can I do it already? There she is. Let me add her. Send it. We'll see. You know, we should have done a trial run of this before, but, you know. Yay! <laughs> All right, you're frozen, but I see you. <laughs> okay, can you hear me? Yay, I can hear you. Good. Hello, everyone. Can you guys hear both of us? Can you just give us some thumbs up if you can hear us? Hopefully, we're okay. So to do this, we both have headphones in, so I hope you don't hear breathing, because that's like such a pet peeve. <laughs> that when is people so go annoying. And they're like, <sighs> and you're like, oh, all I do, I just hear you breathing. <laughs> I'll just hold my breath the entire time. Right? <laughs> all right. Thank you guys for popping on. I see some names I don't recommend or don't recognize, so they're probably your people. Oh, now your comment comes through if I'm here. Okay, cool. So... I think we have enough people on. If you guys know Facebook Live, if you see this red live box up here, we're live. If you're watching it after, just hashtag replay, comment so we know you see it. I really think this is gonna be helpful for a lot of people. We have our notes, I have my pen, and I don't know, I think this is gonna be fun. And it's different than what we normally do. So it's kind of like, it's just chill and talk. First timer, welcome Billy, thanks for popping on. All right, Trina, so since this is in my group, I did share it to your group and my group, but just tell everybody who you are and let's introduce you because some people, I, I think everybody should know you by now. But, you know, some <laughs> well, I'm, not, that, might I'm not. not quite that cool. <laughs> okay, so I am Trina. I am the owner of Diamonds and Dust, um, which is pretty much what Ashley does. Glitter, she does way more than me, but, and vinyl and some digital downloads. I think that's pretty much all I do. And some Tumblr wraps. Um, I started my business, I want to say in 2017. I don't know, don't quote me on that. But um, somewhere around that, um, I am married and I have four children. Girl, boy, girl, girl. I only have one boy. Um, and Ashley kind of gave me a few Q and A questions. Um, how I got into the crafting world is I have always just kind of been a crafter. So, um, and I also like a good challenge. So I ran into somebody, a post that somebody made tumblers and I dove into the community, watched for a while and then thought, I wonder if I can do that. And then it led to where I am now. Awesome. So I also think if, if people don't know Trina, I think that you, just from your work alone, even if they don't catch your lives, they just see your work. I think you're more artistic. I think you have that brain. Yes, you're a businesswoman and all that too, but I think just, I can be crafty, but I can't, you do calligraphy <laughs> and you draw and you can actually paint where a lot of people don't have that raw talent where we need like a vinyl to cover. You can just yeah. freehand stuff. So I think that's really cool too, because I think there's a difference between crafty people and artsy people and you have a good blend of both. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah. That I can't guess. I can see that, world. but thank you. Yes. <laughs> okay. So if anybody doesn't know me, oh, and you are in Utah. I am. I am in Utah. You are on the other side. So if yes. you guys don't know me, I'm Ashley. I'm the owner of AB Designs. We are in Largo, Florida. I have two girls and I started doing this full time right after COVID. So has it been two years now? I have done this. I'd started with shirts and embroidery and all that. And I did that for eight years. And then once we got a storefront a few years back, it took a while, but I officially quit my nursing job and then am now full-time doing the shop, embroidery, t-shirts. We have a couple employees. So I am now full on doing this. Woohoo, Florida, Jacksonville. Okay. You're only a few hours away. Hi, Stephanie. Hello, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for popping on. So we got a lot of the same questions, which is why I think this will be good for anybody doing tumblers or starting a small business because you have one side of it with Trina doing it from home. You're pretty much by yourself where I kind of ran and have employees, have a store. So it's very different, but I also think a lot of people, I think success is determined differently between who you are, right? Like for me, it was being able to quit my full-time job. Some people are, when I hit a hundred thousand people on TikTok, that could be their success. You know what I mean? Right. So you can have one cup go viral and never have any business. Like everybody's success is measured differently. So Absolutely. starting just saying that. So a lot of questions people are asking is shipping. So Chris Lewis said, best ways for small business ship their products efficiently without the shipping and handling costs as much as the products. I have already been to the local post office, priced out shipping, but is there something else out there? I think our answer is going to be the same, but you can start. Um, so being a small business and having like a website, it kind of just automates it for you. But I have found if you're a little bit slower and you're not doing as many shipping packages, then pirate ship is what I found actually saves a little bit of money. Um, I even Etsy sometimes will overcharge and I have to go back and refund. Um, but pirate ship is what I found will save you even a little bit more from just the post office fees. Yeah. Everybody is going to say pirate ship. And I completely agree. We had to upgrade. So we use Shopify and we'll get to that, but I hands down think everybody should get a website. Um, we use Shopify and we have the basic, whatever it was like $89 a month or a hundred bucks a month, whatever it is. And we upgraded to the next one up and it was like $300 a month. So you're adding to your overhead, but that allowed me to add UPS as an option instead of just USPS, because when your orders come through, just like on Etsy, you see the order, once you ship it, you can print the label. And of course you get a little bit of a discount using that platform, but that allowed us to do UPS shipping, which for us being in Florida, shipping to Washington, California, that saves us a lot of money. Um, but I think hands down, everybody's going to say pirate ship <laughs> and this goes into pricing everything too. You have a box, a box can cost you upwards of a dollar 50 for a box. Then you have your packaging tape. Then you have your label. Do you use a Dymo XL? Because those labels are a hundred dollars a roll. Yes. <laughs> like people, and this is why I think it's important to shop small, but also understand don't just shop when they have a sale, like support them all the time, because all those things add up. If you have a 20 ounce tumbler and you find a package that is on Amazon, you have to price that into your product because that is shipping cost. Mm -hmm. That is shipping and handling. So when someone says shipping and handling, that is shipping and then the handling fee. So that is your packaging tape, your tissue paper, your bubble wrap, whatever it is, you can't just, that's why Everyone loves Amazon, right? Because you get it next day and it's free shipping, but you also pay an annual fee for that. Correct. So <laughs> yes, that, that always, you have to include shipping and handling. Or if you say, okay, this tumbler is $30 or you decide to say it's $40 shipped, that's why you're going to get more attention because you know that you might lose $3 yeah. if it costs 13 bucks to ship it, but oh, it's free shipping. I don't know why, but free shipping people, because <laughs> yeah. they know how it far does. it could be and it's expensive. Yeah, it is very expensive. All right, let's, let's go to the next one. So Miss Holly, we love her. She's a local. Um, the best way to post, she posted a bunch of questions, but the best way to post and promote tumblers for sale. I think it's like anything when you have a clientele, like when you started with hair, 
right? You had a few customers, I'm sure. It took you a long time to develop customers. For sure. Um, this is one huge reason why I'm like, give credit where credit is due type of thing. Because even though you're just posting your Tumblr somewhere, somebody is seeing your work and word of mouth really travels. So say like my hair career, I built on word of mouth. I didn't pay for any advertising. It's just my client would leave and be like, right. oh my gosh, I love her. And that's going to happen. That's actually kind of got how I got into Tumblrs as well is I didn't really want to make tumblers, but it <laughs> <laughs> wasn't really my thing. But I was doing hair and they would say like, oh my gosh, I love your cup. I'm like, oh, thanks. I made it. And then do you make tumblers? Yes. Right. Um, can you make one for my friend? Yes. And then it kind of got into businesses where businesses wanted me to do it. And that's when I learned I did not want to make custom tumblers and I got more into teaching. But word of mouth travels fairly quickly if you can just somehow first of all self-promote everywhere you go take a tumbler with you <laughs> 100 if you're using it's it a or walking not, advertisement yeah, take a tumbler with you and then answer questions and be i wouldn't say pushy i'm not super pushy but i would just be like oh you do you, are you looking at my tumbler do you like it yes i made it you should check out my instagram it's Keep fun. business cards everywhere you yeah go. Keep business, business cards, cards something on like you. that um, for that also, this is kind of a crazy thing, which is kind of a catch 22 is I still, even though I don't take custom Tumblr orders, get people that are in Tumblr groups that we think are for learning that are watching for people to post something that they want. I will get a DM all mm -hmm. the time. I want this Tumblr. So even though you're thinking, I don't want to really post in these groups, um, they can be a little rough. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, I would still post. Get away from that fear. Um, still post because there are people that join those groups just to look for an artist. I bought one the other day. For. It was yeah. a sublimation <laughs> something. And, and I, I make tumblers, but it was still, I was just, no, I don't want to do this, but I'll buy it. Yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. But I also think that also leads into um, like a business page and all that. I do think if, even if this is a side hustle, take a picture of everything. Like it's so true. Everything is content. I know for a fact when I, and I hate TikTok. I just hate it. I'm sorry. Oh, it's toxic. It is so However, toxic. <laughs> I hate TikTok. And it, I'm, I don't know if that's just showing my age or what, but when I constantly post on TikTok, our sales for the business, I notice a difference and that sucks because I hate it. But then I go, okay, set an hour aside at night where I just record my lives because I go live multiple times yep. a week, screen record my lives and post them because I know it does you never know who's going to see it and it could be yes. the next customer. So when you're making the tumblers and people like watching a journey. So if you, from beginning to end, it's annoying because everything is content, but it's true. Yes. So post your pictures. If you have a little Facebook and a lot of people, I posted the other day and I said, if anybody has um, uh, teacher appreciation week is coming, mother's day is coming. Let's do a, a post. A lot of people are posting groups and I know groups are really popular, but if you have a business page, yeah. not a group for people to get into a business page that people can look at albums, ready to ship, whatever. And yes, I do think you need a website or an Etsy. We'll get into that. But I do think posting your stuff because someone can share it. Someone, even if they do, like that, um, whatever that TikTok is where it's like, okay, you don't have to support me by buying something. You can still like it and share yes. it. That is 100% true. So mm -hmm. even though I may not want to buy it, there might be somebody else that's my neighbor, my friend, somebody I work with that would go, oh my gosh, I totally want that. And then they would, you know, do the rabbit hole search to try to find it if you have a friend that shared your post. So I definitely think posting, having a business page, even if it's just a side hustle and you didn't go full on LLC and all that, I do still think that's relevant. And I think you should 100% have some sort of business page for people to find. Agreed. Okay. Um, okay. Best app to use for watermarks. I can show you the one that I use. Um, we have Corel draw because I do t-shirts. We had like a true Mac daddy graphic design software. People use Canva. People use all the other thing, whatever they are, but I watermark it's re-downloading, but it's like that little yellow stamp. I believe the free version, you can watermark stuff. You can also pay for it, but it's literally just an app. I have my um, logo on there that's already uh, a little bit gradient or whatever you call that. Um, and then you just select the photo, uh, access to all, all photos. I will put my picture in there. It'll import the picture for you and then you can watermark it. So I just use an app and it can literally import the pictures to and from. How do you watermark all, 
all yours or you put your name on it? So I used to do my logo and then um, this was just my own personal observation, <laughs> but I felt like kind of got hidden. So yes, my watermark was there where I could recognize it, but were other people recognizing my business? Correct. I didn't feel they like they were. couldn't actually see your business yeah. name. They just went, oh, there's some sort of a diamond yeah. logo. But yeah, like, and I can recognize it, so I knew my work. But so then I switched to just typing out diamonds and dust Along, and putting it on there. The cup, yeah, yep. And I just felt like it was easier. So if somebody typed in on Instagram, diamonds and dust, they could at least recognize my work. Right. So I kind of went away from my logo just because I didn't feel like it was kind of slamming no, that's people a good in the face point. like I yeah. wanted them to. So I just went to typing it out. Okay. I like that. And see, for me, it's AB. So it's simple. Yes. So I think my logo still works, but that's a good point. Okay. How do you get people to interact with your posts? Is there something special I'm missing? Girl, work, work, <laughs> work, work, work. Sometimes yeah. I post something that I think is the most beautiful piece of art I've ever created and you get two likes and you're like, I'm sorry, did you not just see what I posted? Cause that yeah. was amazing. And then sometimes you <laughs> post some random cup and they're like, Hey, what'd you use? Oh my gosh, this is beautiful. And you have 200 comments and you're like, what You're like the one that I thought was beautiful. Yeah, this one was stupid compared to my last one. Correct. Um, I think getting people to engage is harder now because Everybody ever since it. COVID, yeah, we're just, we just want to be entertained. We're just a swipe and a finger. We don't really want to engage. I try really hard just to sh give people that positive hey I'm here I see your work it looks amazing but I know that takes a little bit of effort on our part but I also think it kind of comes back around when people start seeing you commenting for sure they are like she always comments on mine I should go comment on hers right um a lot of people will open like an open-ended question like mm -hmm. oh my gosh I love this purple what's your favorite color and then a lot of people will just post purple yeah. pink da, 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 and that just kind of boosts you a little bit sometimes you won't get any and sometimes you'll get a lot but some people do an open-ended question yeah that's a good idea too even in, in constant posting even if you like a lot of people do are you a Dunkin's or Starbucks girl if yeah. you're trying to gain that audience in any way shape or form constant posting because some people are just not gonna have the time for it sometimes I'll go live on a Tuesday morning at nine o'clock and I'll have 60 people watching as opposed to a normal busy Friday. And I'm like, why, why is like, why are there so many people here? It's a stupid Tuesday and I'm yeah. doing nothing fun. You, you just don't know what people's schedule are, who's going to pop on when, like it's, I think it just really, it just depends. Just keep posting. And then eventually you'll get the same people like the, Hey, I'm the three people that like my post. I'm going to Walmart. You want anything? And you appreciate those people because they always <laughs> yeah. post and you appreciate them. So I don't think you're missing anything. And I also don't think you, you have to, pay for Facebook because you can pay no. to yeah no girl no I, don't I understand do why people do it mm -hmm. and I think I've done it twice in the last five years but it's yeah. just not worth it it's yeah it's, I tr I've tried it yeah. but I just never really felt it like oh my god brought anybody yeah right. like it's I'll just I might have myself. seen a couple likes or comments from people I didn't recognize but is that just a Facebook robot like I, yeah. I just didn't, yeah it was more just staying <laughs> yeah. consistent posting a ton it's and and Pictures are really important too. I don't know if there's any questions about that, but pictures, oh, there is one down at the end. So we'll get to that too. Um, okay. Any tips with setting up an online website? So this is something that I have been <laughs> training up because she <laughs> yeah, is on Etsy and she doesn't have yeah. a website for us. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm not knocking Etsy because that's how I started. And no. when I left and did a shop myself, I actually gave my mother-in-law my ex-mother-in-law was like, hey, why don't you keep the Etsy? We're doing really well at the store. She still to this day does it. People are standing outside of our door. And my dog is going crazy. Um, so she does, she still does really, really well on the Etsy. And I know, gosh, Etsy's rules change. The star seller. I can't tell you how many times she's had. And she's got like, I don't know, 50,000 sales at this point. She's been busy for years and years and years. You get one bad review from someone who it wasn't your fault. Then you have to dispute it. And Etsy is just, no, I would highly recommend I agree. an actual website and don't, if you want to start Etsy's a platform, but you're just going to get lost in all the Etsy listings anyways. Like a website to me has been the best decision that we've made as a business, but that was also a huge risk because it was a lot of money. I think tumblers, if you have ready to show, tumblers and it's a simple listing I think you can do it all day long and you're going to be crazy successful if you start having 
options like our decals, you've got clear, you've got white, you've got one and a half inch, you've got three and a half inch. It gets more tedious. But if you were just doing shirts and tumblers, I would 100% hands down say, get a website. You will thank yourself in the long run. And it may not be the most beautiful at first, and you may have a lot to learn, but I would get a website. Hi, Tina. I always do see you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Okay. So that was kind of went into the next question. Do you recommend starting off with Etsy or standard website link? If you're constantly posting anyway, and people are starting to join your Facebook group and like it, if you have a website, I think you would be okay. If you just, but if you go on Etsy and you search beach tumbler, there's probably 500 pages to scroll through. And if you don't have a ton of sales, and if you aren't a star seller, you're not going to get to the top of the page. So they're going to be scrolling through other people's pictures anyways. Yeah, um, Etsy, to me, was just an easy starting point, And mm -hmm. I think it's a great starting point. Um, everybody goes there. User friendly, very user yeah. friendly. <laughs> um, and I do feel like it was easy to learn. Um, at this point, yes, I'm beyond needing a website. Um, I just, I'm, I'm slow. <laughs> but Etsy, you have to take very, very seriously, where I feel like people post five cups and be like, I'm not getting any sales. Well, I got this advice once and said, if I walked into a store and I only saw five cups, five tumblers, would I buy anything? No, I'd probably just walk out. So that kind of opened my eyes to, this is a real store. People want to come to your site and they want to look and they don't want to just see five. No, that's not enough, you know? So you really kind of have to be up on that and constantly be adding, especially to get in the Etsy algorithm. They want you to keep it like a store. You sell out, you have to renew. Um, updating your pictures, updating your tags, um, things like that. So I think it's okay to start out there. And it might not even hurt to have both at first because you can get Shopify for, for not too much to get started. And then you can kind of just direct them to Shopify as well. But I know nothing about a website. Clearly, I'm an Etsy girl for now. You're working on that. I mean, it's already <laughs> Slowly. April. I need to give you a deadline. <laughs> May's Slowly. coming right around the corner. It was supposed to be by the end of December. That was my goal. Here it is almost May. And I'm well, now like, you're thinking of TumblrCon. So that's, yeah, that's like, going to be on your mind I just that's keep over. thinking something else. And then I'm like, next week I'll work on it. And then nothing mm -hmm. happens. So, mm -hmm. but I don't think Etsy is bad. But yes, it is very, very watered down. My other advice is, and this one might sting a little bit, but look to copy other people's tumblers oh, 100%. use them as inspiration for your yes, own twist because you do get on etsy and you type in beach tumbler and there's the same 500 thing. the exact same like the only thing that's going to make me decide at that point is maybe a picture um maybe some reviews but if they all look the same i'll probably just pick one the of cheapest the top one five or the right. cheapest yeah like but if i see women i'm like wait a minute that one's actually really cool. I like how she added da da da. You're standing out a little bit. So Barbara, Barbara asked a question, which I think is good. How many orders a month do you think is needed before you get a website? I know there's a difference between, I would price it out, right? So yeah. Shopify was 80 bucks a month and Etsy, now it's, <clears throat> you have that fee, but then you have three or four or 8% of your sale plus yeah. Etsy. Um, so that's Shopify. They take like 3.6% of every processing fee. Etsy, you have each listing fee mm -hmm. when they expire, they, they charge you to yep. renew. Etsy, you also have a processing fee. Mm -hmm. They will take a percentage of your sales. So if you sell 10 tumblers and you made $500, deduct what they took and then say, is it worth it for me to switch over to a website? I would do it based on that. Like how much is your overhead right. what, on a website or whatever, and then make that your own personal goal. Yes, I agree. Um, when I was much slower, the fees were totally worth it to right. me. Like I didn't have to worry about it. Um, but now that I'm busier, I really hate to look at my fees. Right. It's kind of a we punch did the, in the same gut. thing because <laughs> the next level up for Shopify was like I'm not kidding, two thousand dollars a month. But you saved point four percent of your interest. Now because we get them per order, not one big chunk. And I was talking to Mark about this. If it would have been one chunk, we might've noticed it, but because it's every sale, we don't notice it. So I'm like, oh, I'm not. And, and if we did it, we would save whatever. Let's say we save $2,000. It would be worth it. But that chunk that's coming out monthly was mm -hmm. like, holy cow. 
that's a big payment to make when I'm not really seeing those fees. So yeah, I would keep that a personal goal and then go from there. That's, I don't know. That's what I think. Um, any tips on setting up a website? I think we went over that. How do I become um, a boss babe like you, beauty? Thank you, Holly. <laughs> you just that was really your sweet. Tush off. <laughs> um, I would say the biggest thing people do or don't do is they're not consistent enough. As much as I hate social media, it is a huge part of my business. Um, and it is, it is difficult to keep up on for sure. Um, especially when you don't have a social media manager and it's all you. <laughs> yeah. Um, it is definitely like Trina, what are you going to post today? And it might be something stupid. It might just be, you know, glitter I'm starting falling. this cup. Yeah. It, yeah. It might be glitter <laughs> falling or, Hey, here's my color palette for today. And I try to do at least once a day that does not always work. Um, but consistent consistency I think is kind of the key agreed and I haven't posted on TikTok in like two weeks so there's that might have been that <laughs> um I feel guilty and I'm like three days I'm just like you're sucking I well, well I try to do Facebook live but I know I have to keep going on TikTok I know I do because yeah. I know it makes a difference but it is just it it's a lot of work is, um it's a lot must haves for or the best setup to do Facebook live. So first, let me say, I feel like everybody and their mother's doing Facebook lives, but I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Cause you have to get yourself out there. Right. When I was doing Facebook lives a few years ago, you didn't see that many and it was intimidating as crap. And I was like, I don't want to look at my fat ass on camera, but when you get, <laughs> right. but then when you're like, okay, people are learning, people are watching, people are replicating and it's flattering because you're like, oh my gosh, what I'm doing is making a difference. People are learning from what I'm showing and half the time people are commenting things and I'm taking their advice and I'm learning at the same time. So I think that's a big thing um, to point out, but must have for Facebook lives. I think lights, I have cheapo depot. I have lights. Yeah. They're hot. Like yes. I'm almost sweating right now. They are a quite. little bit warm. They're a little hot. Uh, amount of some sort. I don't want to get into any of the drama BS with any of that, but whatever mount you want to use. Um, and then a workspace because sometimes this table looks like I'm working on 1200 different things mm -hmm. and sometimes it's clean, but I have to have this live. Like I can't pack this up and go, this has to be my live table. Otherwise I couldn't get anything done. Like there's, no, it would take more time to tear down and set up every yes. single day. So workspace, some lights, a power strip of some sort. I'm not even going to bother showing you power strip of some sort and then a mount for your phone and you're good to go. Yep. Like, and I also have another phone here. Like I have an old crappy phone and then I have my phone that I have a stand on because when you have the, a lot of times when I don't look presentable, I just go Do straight down to the table because <laughs> yeah. that's what you want to see anyway. Nobody yeah. cares to look at us. So I will just have mine here so I can read comments and stuff, which my phone is so delayed anyway. I'm just so scared to go behind the camera yet. Also know people have asked how I've made cups, but yeah, I think that's how everybody gets started. Like, how do you make that? Well, let me see if I can show somebody and if yeah. anybody watches, it's worth my time. When I first started going live, pretty sure I had three people yeah. watching. Yeah. You know what? It, it I was is for those three people. terrifying. I don't know. Terrible. Ashley seems way more comfortable than I ever was. But if somebody said to me even five years ago, like, you're going to go live, be on camera, <laughs> there wasn't yeah, right. a chance in hell. Like, right. no. But I kind of feel like I'm really proud of myself for, for becoming how who I am. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because, like, I just didn't. I just did not do anything like that. No videos, not showing your face. I hated the way I sounded. But I just did, and I should probably go back and delete it because I'm sure it was embarrassing. But I remember my first live, I thought, just show your hands. You don't right. need to see me, like, At just all. show your hands. But the entire time, <laughs> my hands were just shaking and my voice was shaking. And I just remember, like, wanting to cry. But right. every time you do it, it gets a little bit easier. So and now and you have to, like, pump yourself up oh, to even go live because you're like, no. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, I'm always like, bring out Peppy Trina. Where is right, she? Bring exactly. her out. <laughs> if you're having like but, a really, really crappy day, you're like, I don't want to go live. I don't want to bring this. Sometimes <laughs> you get off live and think, well, that was kind of bullshit. Right. Like nobody came on. And I talked to myself in a room. I that messed up stupid. four different things. Why did I, I keep going? <laughs> yeah, I spilled. It's stupid. That was dumb. I don't want to do that again. But I did. So I am kind of a weirdo. But when I first went live, I Googled how to go live and tips. And one of the tips I always keep in my brain is talk like you're talking to your friends 
and talk like more people are watching than what you see. So oh, yeah. I sometimes I, numbers. yeah, like I don't look at the number anymore. And why? Because I might only catch one or two people at four o'clock in the day, but they're going right. to go back and they're going to watch. So I talk like I'm talking to a big group of sure. my friends and I ignore the number because the, no the number can hurt you can hurt your self-esteem oh, a little bit. You can be like, well, I have this many people watching yesterday. But then, you, you know, the number two, if you're watching for statistics or to be like, what day is a good day to go live? Some days are better. Some times are better. But it is what it is. But I, I do love that Facebook you can replay. Like TikTok yeah. when you go live. I think now you can save it, yeah. but you couldn't before. I hated that because the whole point of going live is to show people what you're doing to encourage someone or whatever. And that bothered me. So Facebook was always, even if I would be cleaning the house or doing laundry, if you go to like Diamonds and Dust YouTube and you hit playlist, it'll just play them all. And it's like, okay, well, I may not be totally focused or you're watching a crime show or a makeup tutorial, whatever. You can just have it on repeat. Same thing with the lives. If you go into the group and you watch the videos, it's, it's nice to know you can rewatch things. And then you see the number go, oh man, I only had 500 views by the end of that video. But at the end of the day, you have a thousand. You're like, okay, then people are getting off of work they're watching them. Then you see the cups pop up in your feed and you're like, okay, good. So I know people are seeing it. I know people appreciate it. And that number, you just, you've got to ignore it because yes, you they'll tear you down real quick. <laughs> yes, it sure does. All right. Miss Marcy, in my area, this is a good question. Mm -hmm. In my area, customers are reluctant to pay a base price on tumblers, i.e. $35. I have a hard time selling larger tumblers for $45 or ones for more that are challenging, that are more challenging to make. I've noticed that it at shows and in stores that I have my products in. Is there a way to easily say or show how much work goes into them? I don't want to draw my customers with information. I don't want to drown my customers with information when they come to my booth though. I think that goes, that's with anything. If you're going to mm -hmm. buy, if you go to TJ Maxx and buy a pair of earrings, super cute. If you go to a craft show and you see a hand molded, clay earring why are those $35 and the ones at TJ Maxx are 15 like I think is I think I think that goes with anything handmade if they don't know that it's handmade and don't appreciate it that's on them like that's yeah don't don't sell yourself short because they don't understand how much work went into it yeah for sure I think if I was to redo custom orders I wish I did it like this now we all start out at a cheaper price because it's like just buy my stuff and get my stuff out there I think mm -hmm. that's okay for a minute but the hard part about that is is ever saying like okay my $20 tumblers are now 45 you are scared to lose your customers so if I was to start customs again I would do a base price and then add like for hair. everything like, yep special. you want a one color glitter one name or quote that's 35 20 ounce or whatever whatever size you want to add um if you want a two color it's five dollars more whatever two dollars whatever you want to do plus a name it's do you want more. yes do you, do you want, want that do you want an boom? ombre that's ten dollars yep. more yep. i totally 100 percent agree with you and i think it's really hard because the community in, in general is so oversaturated mm -hmm. but just like I, I, that this is such a hard topic because i know some areas you're going to have more saturated areas where you can sell them, where they have to sell them cheaper. And then you get somewhere that doesn't know about tumblers. And it's like, Oh, this is so unique and new. Like there, I'm sure there's somebody in the world still who doesn't know what a glitter tumbler oh, for is. Sure. You're going to come across them and be like, well, what in the yeah. California is that? And you're like, <laughs> yeah. um, well, yeah. so I, I totally agree. I would used to do, cause I don't do customs anymore, but I used to do 10 or $15 more than the ounce of cup mm -hmm. and then add for per thing. If it's just, a decal on a cup and it's glitter. That's the easiest thing you can possibly do. If you start throwing in a power wash, a peekaboo, uh, like you said, an ombre, oh, you want vinyl on half? Well, then that's striping tape. Then that, like, you have to know your worth. And then the other thing is people are like, oh, well, they undercut and sell it for $20. When they sell it for $20 and they receive that crappy yes. item, they mm -hmm. will understand why you are valued yep. more, why your products cost more, 100%. And I think People are so afraid and it's a side hustle for a lot of people. It's a small right. business for them. It's not your main business. And when it does become your main business, you've learned all of this already, but they will get that cup that is bumpy and lumpy and got hair stuck in it. And yeah. is it, and then they get one from you and they're like, Oh, no, wonder this, this is $20 why. more. Yep. hundred percent. Yep. 
that and that's something they'll probably have to learn on their own but I totally agree like I even sometimes undersell myself just to here you go have a tumbler and have a great day <laughs> well it's not in the for mood me, I know had tumblers too that I did live and I did I marked them all to 30 dollars even regardless of what it was because I needed the new set of live tumblers because I've been doing that's that about what I'm about them. to do is just come by you and get to. a tumbler and so maybe you could do that. So I actually went and met one of my really good friends at Pinner's conference. I, I know they're not all over, but she made these beautiful tumblers and they were 30 bucks. And I like looked at them and then I walked away and I didn't know her at the time, but I told my husband, I have to go back and ask. I acted like I was looking, you know, sure. of course we were spying. <laughs> And I was like, what in the heck? Like she should be like 60 bucks. Right. So she would do events for cheap. So they would come to her for customs. So I went back and I finally said, why are you selling these tumblers for only $30? Right. I'm like, your work is impeccable. She's like, because these to me are just advertising. Extras. Yep. Yeah. She's like, I sell all of my tumblers at vendor events for cheap. Because ninety percent of the time they come They'll back come to me back. and want a custom or something else. She's like, and then I get to charge them and say, well, that's a custom order X Y Z. So I thought that was kind point. of actually a really smart idea. Like, take your vendor fee and just take it in the butt a little right, bit, and right. then like those get your name out there. You see in the mall, here's a sample. Like you're gonna fall yeah. in love with it, so come <laughs> yeah. and, and then you'll spend the big bucks if you really yep. do like it. Uh, Shelly. I just said, I did a festival and it was hard to sell my cups when Joe in the booth next to me was selling sublimation cups for $20, but the people that knew the difference between the two bought it for me. Yeah, 100%. Uh, sublimation, I, I personally hate sublimation probably because I can't figure it out. I've done an oven. I've had presses. I personally don't care for them. They were never super vibrant. And then I have bought them off of people because I'm like, oh, I love that. Bought it. I got it. And the pictures were crap. Be, or the pictures were great and the cup was dull. Not great. So I'm just not a sublimation person. And I think that's just going to be. Situational. Yeah. I'm not a sublimation fan. I am totally more respect for the art. So Correct. I just, I don't want to just print and press no, nothing against that. It's just my own personal opinion. Um, so if anybody ever came to your booth and picked one, one up, I would maybe at that point, maybe start selling and just be like, just so you know, those are all hand glittered and a pocket hand made. Yeah. Yes, like made. that's at one point you would have to maybe say like, I mean, you're not going to want to be like, well, that's why I'm cheaper, right. more expensive than Joe, right. but you're going to want to speak up a little bit and just be like, just so you know, those are all hand glittered and I cut and place every decal so they can maybe click that right. they were made like, see by how hand. Thick this, is? this has coats of epoxy resin on it. It's sealed in there. It's going to last you years and years and years. Yeah. yeah. Just definitely sell yourself, but that's a very good point. And I think a lot of people, sublimation is great for stencils. If you're rhinestoning something, right? Yes. Like, that's a fabulous use. Yes. For, that in that my was opinion, a great that's idea. a great use for sublimation cups, <laughs> yeah. but I'm not a huge fan of them either. That's just, that's just my preference. Um, okay. Too. Next, would you suggest Etsy or personal website? We definitely already went over that one. Um, this is from Jeremy Bagwell. Most of my sales come from my full-time job and family and friends right now. Correct. That's how most of us mm -hmm. get most of our business. What about social media? Best ways to build followers and possibly make sales. Jeremy, I definitely think we touched on this, but I want to thank you for your question. And I, I agree with what we said before, just constant posting, make sure you have a business page on, even on Facebook, because that's the best for me that's grown our business. And posting and sharing yeah. and being consistent, like Trina said. As constantly. much as all of the social media apps, we all hate them. Correct. <laughs> they all have their pros and cons. Instagram is almost impossible to grow on anymore. I but I Instagram. still post Well, I like there. the reels. I'll, I'll, sit in, I'll sit in bed and scroll TikTok the TikTok is very, very toxic. I Horrible. cannot stand TikTok, but you grow the fastest there. And I do probably get the most engagement there. But what I will say about if you struggle with um, your posts, I'm going to give you a little bit of a hint of what I do with mine to up my social media game. And what I do is when I record everything that I'm doing, I mean, not everything, obviously not when I'm working, but I mean, just like if I'm making it a Tumblr, I record from start to finish and I break that Tumblr down into two or three posts. So like, I'll take this for example, like, oh, I, I placed, I placed the vinyl on that could be a post, um, make a cute sound or use a cute sound. And then I glittered it. That could be post two. Then I'm going to add the stripes and the decal that could be post three. And then 
what I do is because by that point, people don't know what you've posted. They're not watching you that right. closely. Then I go back and I compile all of those videos and make a fourth video of the Tumblr finished. So it can be really that simple. If you are short on um, what am I going to post today for like me glitter, I can put some in my hand. I can sprinkle oh, it on paper. Um, don't be afraid to grab an old cup that you've made that you want to sell and just be like, Hey, look how cute this is. Like people just, it's literally as much as I used to be able to think, well, that's not really quality content. And I still struggle with that. Like that is a stupid post, but it really isn't quality content anymore. It's just content. content. Like, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't literally. matter if it's quality anymore. So just post content. Even if you were just showing like the bottom, like, oh, I love this purple glitter. I could just show the bottom of my Tumblr and promote. Stay tuned to watch the end re result or something. So right. I usually How many break times have you gone to a video and been like, stay tuned for part two? And you're like, there's no part two yet. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah you're like, wait you. a minute. Yeah, they do. I'm always scrolling. Right, where, right, where, right. where is it? <laughs> so you can post same tumblr just break it down and then you have your social media almost for the week if you could break it down in four or five posts yeah and i i like i said i don't even have that much posted on tiktok i are like mark just commented very important to stay consistent people will forget you lives are our lifeline he's the my business partner he is 100 percent correct if i don't go live and i try to go multiple times a week minimum once a week if i don't go live and we have something else going on and the embroidery girl's out so i have to go over on that side of the business it, it makes a difference. So people, and a lot of times it's, you have to, when you stay consistent, yes, but also doing things that are relevant to people or that holiday or that, like, I don't like Gothic. That's not my theme, but steampunk isn't me, but I know it's popular. So I made a steampunk yeah. cup and a lot of people liked it. You do have to do things that are relevant to other people, not just you, not just, okay, well, I may not be uh, adult humor type of person, but people buy cups with penises on it all day long. You may not be a religious <laughs> yeah. person, but yeah. someone's going to love this Bible verse and remember that, you, that you're not doing this You will you. not ever catch me making a penis never cup, okay? Minute, I just, I'll sell it all day long, but I'll never make yeah, it. Yeah, like, like, it's just, I'm sorry <laughs> if you're into that. You do you, but that is yeah, one you, thing you, I won't branch yeah, out. No, <laughs> nope, I'm, with, I'm totally with you on that one. <laughs> All right. Um, Lily Spall said, best way to market your products. I definitely think we've been over that. Photo setups or videos. I think this is really good. I've done a live on it and Trina has also done a live on it. She did it also in depth, um, more detail about how you used your iPad and settings that you, so you have a whole on another live. Mine was more, I'm going to Target. I saw a bunch of stuff that inspired me. The rugs, the fur, the little beads, the accessories that you use. I definitely think photos are so important. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people think they're photographers and they might make the most beautiful cup in person. But if you can't photograph it and grasp and like capture the beauty of that cup, girl, you aren't going to go anywhere. Like you no. have to like, this, this is such this a is big, actually a, big thing. Yes. Like it's a huge pet peeve of mine because you are showcasing your work. So you're just taking it on your bedspread in a dark bedroom we're not going to on see a, it or on a towel when you oh yeah or a, a towel, towel or something dog hair <laughs> just, on it. it just can't happen um where i do my lives is usually right here and this is also my photography setup i have two tabletop photography things and then i have a small ring light as well um i felt like the extra small ring light really took my tumblers to a next level um Emma, other thing you, that I feel like is, is important which a lot of people don't do so we get all these cute rugs and these cute beads they let that be more of the show than their tumbler like zoom that baby in and that is supposed to be your background the foggy you want that depth <laughs> of field is a thing and you want that to be not the focus and in the background yes. yeah that's it so zoom but your pictures tumbler in, in general gosh Before you your tumbler is the show and not the leaves and stuff behind it. Like if your background is more than your tumbler, you need to zoom it in. Like I zoom it in almost as far as I can. So there's just very little around and my tumbler is speaking for itself. It's very rare for the funeral home next door. They're in the strip center next for people to be there, but apparently they're there today whatever. Um, yeah, I, I'm telling you right now, if you don't learn how to use the settings on your phone, 
or just practice to practice, 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 yes. take an, take a coffee cup you didn't make and take a picture of it. And I'm, I just, this is so important because I've seen so many people who have gorgeous pictures. You'll see them have more attention on the posts that they post than somebody who maybe had just as beautiful of a tumbler, but a really crappy picture of it. Like yeah. even outside in the light, when they hold it, sometimes those are beautiful because the lighting is gorgeous. The backdrop is just grass or a fence and it's in the back. I, I definitely can't emphasize how you don't need a DSL or a no. uh, whatever single lens yeah. reflex. You don't need a special camera. Everything we do is pretty much on our phones. Yeah. Or Mine's our totally or iPhone. Yeah. hundred percent. So. Um, I would just play with the settings. I edit ever, ever, even though I have the three lights and some daylight from a window, I still edit every single photo I will do. I will usually up the exposure. Sometimes yep. the brilliant, sometimes I'll turn down the shadows. And then I also play a little bit with on the iPhone anyway, it's called black point because sometimes <laughs> when we expose it too much, we lose the color and the black point will bring it back. So just yeah. play with it a little bit. You don't want to make them too crazy, but you do want to enhance the lightness and the glitters will look more sparkly. And you guys that. can completely agree when you're scrolling through somebody's page or your feed, if you see that gorgeous lit up beautiful tumbler how you can see all the sparkles you're like oh my gosh it's so pretty it catches your attention mm -hmm. like that is so if you take anything away from this up your photo game just saying yes all right licensing how do you ensure you get one for your business and state Lily? i think that is that's per state that's different like if you are we're an s corp most people have a small business are an llc limited liability i think that's just personal preference yeah. do you want to hold that that is just completely I would post that. I don't know how to answer that for your state. If you're in Florida, you can do either or. You just got to check the name. Like on Florida Sun Biz is where we would go. Check to make sure the name isn't taken. Register it and then do your like. I think for our state, it's like 250 bucks to get your LLC. Super simple, but yeah. If, if you wanted to go all in, I highly recommend and suggest that to people. But also, um, it's different per state, so I can't answer that. Um, what is the best way y'all have found to grow your small businesses without breaking the bank or selling your soul? Well, thank you, well, Jenny we, Streeter. We yeah. sold our soul. I was just going to say, you will never know. <laughs> I, yeah, you can go ahead. You start this one. Um, so I speak from my own experience and how I started, um, say, I don't know. I, don't want this to come across arrogant, but like how I recognized, I will say that is literally just being active in, in this community. I was in every Facebook group. I was commenting, I was liking, I was being helpful, things like that, which kind of brought more attention to just who I was as a person. Um, and then when I would post my tumblers, recognize me and would start following me. Um, which I felt helped my business grow. Um, tumblers is a little different because you're competing with tumblers, but I mean, there's a lot of glitter and vinyl suppliers and I'm in all those groups and I still sh show support. So I think for me, myself is just how I represent myself is what has drawn a lot of my customers to me. Yeah. A hundred percent. I remember your YouTubes, Leah said. Yes, that's how I found Trina years ago. I think I was looking up, <laughs> I don't know what, I was on my, my back patio and I was looking up um, a domed uh, keychain. Oh, yeah. And it was something. Yeah, yeah. Yep, I still got the liquid latex. I pulled it out. Yep. And had to blow the dust off it because I hadn't yeah. touched it in years. Oh, yeah. But, but that was, that's how I also found Trina. Um, so without breaking the bank, we did it to be completely honest, just like our embroidery business, we bought one machine at a time. With the glitter, I went up to Mark, who is my business partner. I said, hey, listen, I've been making these cups and I work 16 hour shifts at my nurse job. I really think we could sell this glitter. And he's like, glitter, you know, like a typical dad, <laughs> like you wanna play with glitter. Yeah. And I said, do we have any money in the bank to just buy some glitter and see how it goes? And he's like, I mean, do you really think it's gonna work? I'm like, yes, it's gonna be fabulous. And he's like, okay. So he said, here's the amount. It was like 1200 bucks. It wasn't a lot of money. Um, and he said, go for it. Now you have to find a supplier. You have to find, you have to do all the research and have all your numbers and have a plan and trust your self and trust the process. And that's how we did it very slowly. Um, I think 
also being having good customer service and being helpful, like Trina said, in other groups. Like I stopped posting in other groups to be completely honest with you because I kept getting booted from them. And yeah. then people would post my business not knowing and then I would get like flagged because my business was posted, even though I didn't post it. Like if they had an affiliate link, yeah. and they'd be like, oh, buy it from AB and use Escot 15. And then they would get mad at me. And I'm like, that's, that's an affiliate of mine. Yeah, I didn't tell them to post me. your group, boot them. Like, yeah. don't, why are you mad at me? So, and then customer service, I think kind of like, how would I compare this to? Kind of like healthcare. Like that's become, you don't get bedside manner like you used to. You don't have nursing care like you used to. Customer service, you don't ever mm -hmm. call somebody and get a, get a real person. You are, thank you for calling AT&T. You know, and it's like, bro, <laughs> like, I need I someone in this, this time today. zone. Right. Yeah. So that I think really makes a difference. When we have an order that was messed up, we do our best to fix it. We try to ship things quickly. Like customer service is really important. Neil and I went on a date last night and the, the owner of the company was a really small little restaurant on the beach. Really nice. And the owner came over and was like, hey guys, I'm the owner. I'm Chris. How was your meal? And I was like, dang, I can't tell you the last time that the owner, actual came over. owner came over and just chatted us up like it was very refreshing to and then of course I asked him where he got his shirts embroidered and then we switched business cards but <laughs> yeah. it was really nice for him to take time out of his evening making rounds at the tables that makes you feel appreciated as a customer Deja oh my gosh that makes you feel really appreciated as a customer just like our customers have helped keep us in business with so many people going out of business like yeah I don't think you guys understand how much it means to us to be able to do what we do and love our job and stay in business because a lot of people aren't going up aren't staying in business um and then also staying drama free I think that's how to <laughs> grow the business like for real like I part of we talk about this all the time mm -hmm. part of drama is you get followers right so if you post oh, yeah. drama you're of course you're gonna get if I sit here and tell you about whatever and it's drama and it's tea um, people are going to want to know more. People are going to watch. People aren't going to comment or anything, but you're going to, your, your ratings will go through the roof. Well, I, I don't I'm actually that. super glad you said that. Cause I did write that in my notes and I yeah, really yeah. wanted to touch on that, but I'm going to tell you just my own perspective on things is I used to be and I would, oh, she's starting a new bow business. I'm going to support her because I kind of really wanted to push that women supporting women. And I still do that in my own way, but I have backed it off a little bit because of drama and hurt more of other people <laughs> because I like, I tell myself don't call me an influencer like I don't right. want to be that person like I just want to be like you I want to be your friend every product that I use and promote I'm not I think one affiliate or one that I promote pays me the rest I do for free right just because I feel like that makes me more like I'm literally telling you I love it right um so when I see these small businesses in the drama I'm not buying from them so not only small businesses, but these other people, I bought cups from people. I bought glitter from people. I, you know, and as soon as I see them in the drama and I know that's not who I am and what I stand for, I just stop. So are you hurting your own business by being in the drama? You probably are aware. I saw a TikTok once of somebody saying, I will never buy a Tumblr from those Tumblr girls. So I did a little deep dive and I guess she saw some of the drama and I thought, wow. Right. Good for you. <laughs> that was eye that. opening. Yes. Yeah. Like that was really eye opening. Like these people that want the drama mm -hmm. for the attention to grow followers. Cause like she said, you will grow followers yep. is killing our industry. It wasn't a Tumblr girl. It was just a random chick saying, I will never buy a Tumblr from those Tumblr girls. And I thought, wow, like, I know that we think, oh, the drama, it's so fun, but also hurting our industry as well. And it's so very important to stay out of it because I also know like when I looked for my affiliates, I did a deep dive on them and made sure they were out of the drama. I just don't stand for it. That's not what I want. 100%. That's not who I want to be. So you may be hurting yourself as a small, small business or if you want affiliations by being involved in the drama. I think a lot of people 
can play dumb or might straight up be naive in that they didn't know, like they follow somebody and they really like them, but it's kind of like, if you have nothing nice to say, don't say anything at all. Go back to the golden rule, right? Yeah. Like if this person that you're watching, you might think they're funny. You might think they're whatever, but if they're constantly ragging on people, they're constantly calling people out. They're constantly just being the mean girl. Mm -hmm. You can't play naive to that. You have to know yeah. that, that I don't care if it's funny. If you, I, I, it's, it's the world that we live in. Like, of course, anything you say is going to offend everybody. Yeah. Well, get over it. But yeah. when you are constantly watching someone and they don't talk about anything because they're constantly doing lives. They're constantly just educating. They're constantly just showing products. They're constantly just hustling. Those people will get my attention more than somebody yes. who's going to tell you a story. Yes. Every now and again, we get caught up in drama. Oh, and we yeah. know what's going on. But, but besides that, it's, it's, I'm not feeding into it. I'm not going to comment and mm -hmm. be a keyboard warrior. Like there is enough of that in the world. Crafting should be our happy place. Crafting yes. is like where we go to be like, okay, this is fun. This is what we're like, you go to get away from all of that. And when people bring that into the group, I'll boot you. Yep. I don't care. I don't have time. Oh, for I'm the same. Constantly. I don't care. And someone's we like, oh, are... I didn't mean this. And I was like, I don't care. I don't care if I never, ever reach 10,000 <laughs> people in our Facebook group. I don't care. Like yeah. then there's not 10,000 worthy people because it is ruthless out there. We are all, all business owners and we all need to act like business owners. Even though Correct. you may do this for a craft, if you want to sell one tumbler, you need to act like you're owning a business and not get into that. Because, I mean, to be honest, you wouldn't support a business if you saw them on a commercial that was just constantly Correct. rubbing you wrong. You know, so it's the same here. We are business 100%. owners. We need to act like business owners. Does that mean me and Ashley are completely perfect little innocent angels? No, I talk well, shit yes. all the time, but I'll never be rude <laughs> to somebody. But yes, to their like face. of course, there's people we don't like. There are, right. of course, there 100%. are people that rub us wrong. And yes, there are times that we have even vented to each other, but publicly, no, no. It, that's what you do. No. That's what you do with your trusted friends. You can vent to them. Yes. I don't. You know, when you're married, you call your mother-in-law and you're like, oh my gosh, he did that, blah, blah, blah. Like, but it's just, it's never, it's never with malicious intent and it's never to leave who you were talking to. That stays between you and it's just, you're just venting with your girlfriend. And I think that it has gotten so far out of hand, which is why I stay away from TikTok. I don't care. I don't care if we just stay what we are and we never grow. I've said that from day one and I will continue to say it because no, no, thank you. Yep. Candy says, I, agree, your I hate drama. 100%. Yeah, ain't nobody got time for that. All right, so next question from Vicki Turner. What is the best way to keep track of sales and the best way to make invoices, et cetera? Um, I'm assuming you're saying if you don't have a website. So my first thing is going to say, get a website or get an Etsy. Um, if you aren't quite busy enough for that, a lot of people do binders. A lot of people definitely write them down because sometimes I'll be like, oh my gosh, I have a cup due in three days yeah. and I forgot about it because you didn't <laughs> write it down and then you yeah. have to pray that fast that works perfectly. Um, definitely like a... A lot of people, you can even find them on Etsy of Tumblr order pages, like Tumblr, like mm -hmm. PDFs or something that you purchase. And it's the cup size, the glitter colors. Maybe if you want to sketch out a little, I mean, I wouldn't be sketching, but you want to draw out a little <laughs> something like a baseball goes here, a name goes here. Definitely a list or a binder or something like that so that you don't forget things. Um, whatever, like this, just, just a simple something like that. That way you can keep track of them. And then maybe a little calendar that says, you know, four cups due this day, whatever. And then you can reference your binder. I don't, how, I mean, before Etsy, how did you keep up with your orders? Um, I am not claiming I'm the most organized person. So I normally would just write it somewhere and then stick it somewhere. But as I got, <laughs> <laughs> as I did get a little bit busier, needed to be more organized, I did go to, I think PayPal even has an app where they give you an invoice and I would at least break it down and print that out and keep it like, okay. I wouldn't binder it, but I would at least give it in a stack. Right. But then I got to the point where I'm like, you know, I don't want to do customs anymore. So that was short lived. Right. Right. <laughs> right. I think you learned quickly. Uh, and then we had a couple questions from, <sighs> what was this one? Oh, Instagram from Ekmat Carp. How do you start a vinyl and decal business? It seems intimidating. That's because it is. <laughs> Listen, I, I, if anybody wants to do it, I'm all for you. I really, right. truly, truly believe Trina, I've talked about this a hundred times. There's enough customers for all of us. Even if everybody wanted to sell vinyl, I really strongly believe that she's always going to have something I don't have. I'm always going to have something she doesn't have. She's going to be on the other coast. We are, maybe yep. she's closer for shipping. There's just so many different reasons. And I, that's another reason I just 
don't understand why people get salty. Like you're always going to have Walmart and Target. So move on with your life. Yep. Um, it does seem intimidating. Stay organized because I have not been organized from day one and we grew more than I could have ever imagined. And we're going back now. So you're the perfect example. We, when we first started our vinyl, I should have done this from the jump and I freaking didn't was labeling oh, labeling our vinyl, right? So if I would have done this from day one, we now start, here's an adult humor one, sorry. Here is our label on the bottom now. So we have the business email address or the website, our little logo, and then the name of the vinyl. I should have done that from day one because we've got like 5,000 yeah. vinyl options and I <laughs> yeah. wish I would have done that from the jump. See, I'm like where you're at. I was like, damn it, I should have freaking done that. But I will say Should've. for me, my brain works better with baby steps. So mm. for to me, if I started vinyl over and I was like, I have to research machines and how much do I think I'm going to sell and I'm going to have to pay for this and how am I going to learn this machine? Like I even did that with my silhouette when I got it, it stayed in the box for like a year. I was like, I don't even want to think about learning it. But I just finally opened it, it was like, let's just try to cut a decal, you know, right. and then it was baby I just need steps. a name. Yeah. yeah, it's like just something like figure it out. And that's kind of how I work with my business is, yes, I need to be doing the exact same thing Ashley is doing. You can see where it is. You can see what, but Gosh, to me, so it was just baby, yeah, just baby steps. Like I honestly even started just adding more vinyl to my shop. Like I wasn't mm -hmm. utilizing my big machine because I was so overwhelmed in my brain of how am I going to keep all of these patterns and how do I know which one yeah. is which and which one they order. So I just barely started doing that. At first I was only order or only adding two a month right, <laughs> with right. my designer boxes. Like that's, that's what I could handle at the time. And then when I realized I could handle more, I was adding more. So to me, my brain works better in baby steps. Yeah. So yeah, same. How would you start it? I mean, you, you need designs, you need to do your research. Um, we're going to get into copyright here in a second. I wrote that little note. Um, but you need to keep it organized. So uh, you don't, don't, if it continues to be successful and you grow like crazy, that's amazing, but staying organized. So we have an external hard drive. That's, I don't know, 10 terabit or something that is hooked up to the computer. And then we have a folder. And then in that folder, it has either decals or vinyl. And then you have all of the other categories, animal print, everything that you would see on our website. We have all of that. And had we done labeling, I would. I would recommend that to anybody because I wish we would have done that from the jump, but keeping things organized, keeping the pictures safe, having an external hard drive in case something crashes and it doesn't take the memory. We wouldn't have enough memory in the computer if we wanted to. So an external hard drive was great for us and um, just keeping track so you don't lose anything, especially if you buy stuff off of Etsy, we couldn't find a design. I don't know what the heck happened to it. And I went to download it again on Etsy. I couldn't download it, it had been so long. So I don't know if the shop was closed or if it had been over a year or what the reason was, but we couldn't re-download it. So I had to refund that customer and be like, yo, I'm sorry, I lost the design, like for real. So definitely just stay organized as much as I wish I would have taken my own advice at the time. That's what I would mm -hmm. say, stay organized. Um, why is my cut always off when I wrap a tumbler? I overlap and it cut it short. Um, T. Clinton, I have no idea. Maybe because are you, I don't, I'm not really exactly sure what she's even talking yeah. about, but like, I'm are you, you trying overlap to wrap it and then you cut it where the seam is not where it overlaps. Like if you cut this, if your, if your paper is going over your tumbler and then maybe she cuts it right here instead of where it overlaps, you know what I mean? Then you have that stainless. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm thinking. Cause I've done that a hundred times and been like, are you idiot? Figure this out. <laughs> and then you don't have that stainless showing. Yeah. Um, I'm not really sure. I was kind of thinking more around like if you bought a tumbler wrap, why does it, why doesn't it go around? Mm. Um, also, I guess we can touch on that is if you do buy a tumbler wrap, since I started selling some of those Cricut, crazy, mm -hmm. that doesn't always transfer the size save. Correct. So when you upload it or whatever you do make sure you Cricut. know the size yes know the size of your tumbler because i even had a person that was just complaining i could not figure out i'm like they're all the same i have that same tumbler it is working just fine but she had a cricket and we figured out that it was too short when she also if someone it. glitters a tumbler first and then yes. they wrap it it adds thickness mm -hmm. to it so you have to consider that and make sure you're cutting a little bit wider or making sure the template itself is big enough to fit because this tumbler the thickness of this one, she a thick chick, as opposed to this thin, 
skinny yes. tumbler, you have that epoxy and that glitter on there. So you have to account for a little bit of that too. Um, okay, so that was all there. I have a comment on copyright. So I see that you don't ever post anything copyright and that you stay true to that. What, have you had any run-ins with that like we did or are you just against it? Always have been. Um, I have been against it from the get-go. The only thing I've ever, I mean, I don't sell it. I don't make it. I just never have. Um, yeah, I just, I just don't. I'm a really big stickler on it. <laughs> and it can be. in mind how many people oh. sell it and mm -hmm. also base their business on something like Disney. Of course, Disney's huge. Everybody loves Disney. There are people who make mm -hmm. rhinestone tumblers who have hundreds of thousands of followers on Instagram and I watch them and they stay in business. They're eventually going to come crumbling down. They're going, it's going to sure. bite them in the ass. Yep. I mean, especially the bigger you get. Um, I wouldn't say it's a pet peeve of mine. I still respect people's work and I love a lot of those Disney, Harry Potter, of course. But to me, I'm a slow grower. Um, mm -hmm. And I think it's because I don't do anything trademarked. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's a little bit of a pet peeve of mine that people like, oh, let me base my business on Chanel. Right. Like, of course I'm going to blow up. They have right. a huge market. It's like, and I'm just over here doing leopard print and swirls, right. you know? I'm trying to but, find something that's Lisa Frank-esque, but yes, not Lisa Frank. But yeah, <laughs> but not like getting myself in trouble. So I've always just stayed away from it. When people would ask, I would say no. Um, I just, I have a lot of people that message me, will you print this vinyl? And I'm like, sure. And then it comes up right. trademarked or copyright. Nope, I won't do it. I won't even risk if you're making yourself a personal tumbler. <laughs> It's just not worth it to me. So I just stay away from it. Yeah. Going through that with Shopify, Emma, thank you. Going through that with Shopify, us having a website and having a substantial customer base. I can tell you our website was on hold for a few days. And I, I did a big post in our group and everything. Even if it was something that didn't say Harry Potter, but it was a heart that had a wizard hat and this, they dinged us for that. And the thought of, and I also thought my, my head well I bought it off of Etsy and that was the original artist but they stole the idea yeah so even though you think it's okay it's not and so I know a lot of people make cups that are like that if it also challenges you more to not make cups like that yes. because you have to come up with your own original idea so based yes. on us getting in trouble and having the potential to lose our our website whew, that was an eye opener for me and I can just tell you steer clear because that is know where you guys want to be. Yep. Um, also, I've seen a lot of businesses that I just want to comment and say, for real, thank you all for being our customers because there are a lot of businesses going out of business, whether yes. it was COVID, the economy, whatever you want to say, whatever the reason is. And I think that a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, your business sells like craft supplies. Are you nervous of going out of business? I, I really, in my heart of hearts, don't think so. I think that the customers that we have have even if it's just a um if it's a small business of course they're going to keep doing it because they're making money but even if it's a hobby you gotta sometimes you have to cut out cut out your hobbies sure but i think for the most part we our products aren't expensive a lot of them if you're not going to go out and buy a birthday gift then make them a cup like i do think that our business it might get hurt a little bit like we might lose some sales but i don't think it's ever going to go anywhere I think it would slow down. Of course, maybe you have to cut hours or whatever, us having employees. But I just don't think, if I have to go out and spend a $25 gift card for somebody's birthday or a $50 gift card, and I can make them a cup for $20, I'm going to make them a yeah. cup for $20. That's yeah. how I'm going to cut those corners. So I don't think, and there's so many holidays and so many teacher appreciation and so many things. I think we will constantly, I'm not in fear of losing or going out of business, but that's just how I feel about it. But seeing other people go out of business, it is. It's sad because it's your livelihood or, you know, whatever. But I, I don't, I personally don't have that fear. But <coughs> thank you to everybody who are our customers because you are keeping us in business. And I hope, you know, your customers years down the road. But yeah, I don't know. I don't think we are Walmart and we can just cut back some hours and save some money. Like, don't come out with new products. Yeah. Like, just sell what you have. <laughs> <laughs> you have to get a little bit more creative, I think. Um, in a harder economy like now you know um even smaller business than my business <laughs> i'm telling you they're having a funeral or something and people are just walking in front of the store 
keep talking. But Come here, girl. yeah, you're good. Um, but yeah, even even just down to like the cup business, um, you just have to get a little bit smarter. Could you save some money here or there? Not buy glitter as often, except I don't want you to do that. Me and Ashley need you. But <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you do have to get a little smarter with it. You know, maybe buy your epoxy why there's a sale or whatever. Um, stock but up I mean, when, I when we yeah, have stock sale. up yeah. when you can. Yeah, like um, small business will try to pass on pass that on to you guys so you can save money as well but I, I mean I have to do that sometimes sometimes I don't order my from my manufacturer as often to try to save some shipping something like that so I think as long as you play your business smart even in a harder economy I think you'll be okay thank you Emma Lee said the, the transparency is nice um, okay. And then some more comments that came through just today and I didn't print them out. Candy Munez says, Munez said, where do you share your lives? So this for me, um, I share it on our business page, not our group. I share it on our page. And then I share that live to my supporters group. And then our regular group, um, because I think there's more of an audience because when you do it in a group and my point is is to have more of an audience, but when I do it in a group, you can't share it. You have to be in that group to view it. And then you go live in your elite group, which is your Patreons. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then when you, in your group group, you don't go live on your business yes. page. I should. After you told me that, that's where I should go live and then just share it. Right. But I usually just go live in my group. In your group. But it's also, I don't know, you're also more intimate with your members. So I think that maybe they feel special that it's just your group. But yeah, <laughs> I, I definitely, if you go live on your business page, excuse me, and then share it to your group, then more of the public can see it and then you can share it more. But that's, that's my opinion. Um, how do you handle bad customers? I can tell you what we all say here at the show <laughs> and then I can tell you how we handle it. I'm going to tell you exactly how to do this is one thing that's really great. I tell my husband about this all the time. Um, I've done hair and nails for 22 years. Um, and when somebody sits in your chair and says, you know, I really hated my hair last time. It's really hard face to face to not be like, kiss my ass because right. that's what you asked for. Right. I gave you what <laughs> you, you asked for. Yeah, like don't come here now, but whatever. But I will say, having more of an online business gives me a second to read, be a gather theory. your thoughts. Yep, <laughs> yeah. toss a little, respond. Um, some people. We've all had some doozies Beyond. over the years. Um, and some people, no matter what you do, they won't be happy. And then I feel like at that point where you feel like I have done everything, like I'll give you an example. Um, there was a girl that ordered glitters and I sell some jars and sell some bags just so people have options. She wanted all jars, but she bought half bags. Okay. Well, somebody was nice and and sent her a bunch of jars for free. I'm like, I'm sorry, I didn't know that you didn't know there was an option, whatever. Okay, well, then she wanted to buy extra jars. I'm like, well, I don't really do that because I'm sure Ashley knows jars are a pain in the ass to store. They're, <laughs> they're, big. Expensive. they're expensive. They're big and they're expensive to buy. So I just don't do that. Um, like, I'm sorry, I don't do that, but I'll send you what you need. Well, then she kept buying bags and wanting jars, which I charge more for jars, Correct. clearly. Uh, um, and then she had a problem with a glitter kind of coming clumpy. I refunded her and she just had a heyday with my business. Um, I was, I just was like, you know, I'm just going to refund you that glitter. The manufacturer said that's normal because of moisture, but it's, it's not, I gave her what the manufacturer told me. I'm like, if that doesn't work, let me know. She's like, that totally worked, but I'm just saying your customer service. And she went on and on and on and on and on. She gave me like, since she bought like 40 glitters from me. 40 one star reviews <laughs> and it was a doozy Girl, I would have lost it I it was a doozy and finally I got a little bit snappy and said please don't buy from me again and do not blast my company anywhere else because I have proof of what I've done for you and then she left me alone but it did take all I freaking had to just kill her with kindness and I still got 40 one star reviews but it is what it mm -hmm. is and I did have to feel like I had to explain that to um, my following because you have 41 star uh -huh. reviews. That's all you have at the top, right. you know? 
So I did finally have to come out and be like, I tried. <laughs> I didn't show screenshots or anything. I am not into that. That's nobody's business. But I was just like, hey, I tried with this girl. I'll tell you what I did. And she still wasn't right. happy because I refunded her the one glitter. I don't know what she wanted from me at that point. Um, people are frustrating in small business. Rude. Um, I recently, rude. yeah, rude. I can't tell you how many rude, like, I'm always like, what happened to hello? How are you? I'm just checking on my order. It's right. just, it's, I, it's, I mean, it's an email that says, where's my order? I'm where's sorry. My order. I am a person. And first of all, <laughs> yeah. how about my name is Ashley May and my order number is one, two, three, four, yeah. five. Could you please give me an update on the tracking as I'm clicking on it and it's not showing me? I want to punch people in the face because they literally will text, <laughs> will literally open an email. Where's my order? Well, mm -hmm. I'll tell you where to put your order, but you know, we have to like get it together. I can't tell you, you how know, many times I wish you could somehow respond to these people and say, you know what? I would have gone to the end of the earth for you Correct. if you were just kind, but now you're bitch. right. And, I and I'm not going to do right anything back. for you. Right. Yeah. Like I'm not going to go forward and be mm -hmm. kind to you. I'm just going to say, I'm sorry, you are unhappy. Here's the refund of your order. But before I would have given you whatever Correct. Yeah, people are going to be. Bitching yeah, to me so they can I <laughs> right. I, d I definitely think this comes with <clears throat> like being in business or being selling at the, because in the very beginning I would go on live and I'm like, I am so sorry, guys. Listen, we are behind. We had more orders than we've ever had. And I would just be so like, please empathize with me. Now I wish I could sarcastically respond to them and say, now that I got that off my chest, let me help you. Um, I wrote down <laughs> yeah. a couple of things. I had a lady who literally bought a decal from me. She mod podges. I don't know how she found us. I could have, if you watch my lives, you've seen me do this a million times. Mod podged the decal onto her Tumblr, sent us a picture and said, this doesn't look like you do. Your product's crap. First <laughs> did of all, she take the it's a off? sticker. She did not take the backing off. She just mod podged the thing. Oh, no. Okay. We have had, um, we've had a lot of scammy people because they mm -hmm. would take advantage of our kindness and they would be like, Oh, I never found the package. You know what? Let me tell you something. And every customer needs to hear this. I don't care where you are. Once that leaves our facility and it has yes. been scanned out by the post office, by UPS, by FedEx, by DHL, by pony mail. I don't care. Once it's been scanned out, it is out of my control. Yes. 100%. Now we did learn from that a lot because we spent a lot of money replacing orders and paying for shipping. We did do the route protection, which is a fabulous app. It's easy to use. We do pay for it, um, but it's easy for customers to get replacements or whatever. So before we had route, I can't tell you how many orders. Someone be like, oh, I never got it. And I said, I'm sorry, it says delivered on your doorstep. Yeah. Do you want me to drive over to Arkansas and find it for you? <laughs> And then we found out it was multiple customers doing it multiple times. And mm -hmm. it was, you know, she'd use her mom's account and then she'd use, and I was like, this isn't adding up. And we'd look it up and she was just trying to get free shit. Like, I would I'm say sorry. That, that is probably the most frustrating email you get is mm -hmm. my order says delivered and it's where not here it? because you, where is it? It's like, I don't freaking know. I, I did oh, my let job. Me get my I magnifying glass and yeah, it's like, detective. I don't know. And like half of me is like, do I call the post office and track it down? And it's like, I don't really have time. That sounds really rude, yeah. but I don't really have time to baby your right. package. Like call the post office, see where the coordinates are. Well, my local Ask post your office neighbors. is 50 miles away. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not going I, there. <laughs> like, I feel bad because I want to help you and I, everybody else gets their packages, but you, do, I'm like that blows my mind. And sometimes also, if you were to copy and paste the tracking onto the post office versus just clicking it from your order page or same with Etsy, if you're just to click it on Etsy and see the tracking update, if you copy and paste that tracking, sometimes their the delivery services website will be a little bit different. It'll be delayed a day or whatever, but that blows my mind. And you guys are customers too. If you guys ship out a cup and someone's like, oh, it's not here. Yeah. What would you like me to do? But I understand you just spent 50 bucks on a cup to have it shipped. But yeah. And of course we want you to have your products. Like, that's what I just think. Like, of course, if my package got lost, I would want my products, but I'm right. going to be doing everything I can to track it down as well. So that is a really frustrating thing. But all so I can say is breathe and then just respond. I'm so sorry. It just says delivered on front porch. Go ask your neighbors. That's usually Correct. what I say. Do you have a ring camera? Like, <laughs> Do you have what, a ring I, camera? I no can you call your post you. office? I'm so sorry. That's. Oh. <sighs>
Yeah. I. Um. Okay. Lost packages, scammers. Um. Oh, here's a good one. This was from Instagram. <laughs> How do you answer, how do you respond or comment to someone who posts an ugly cup? This is a great question and it's an easy answer. Find something on the cup that you like and compliment mm -hmm. that thing. So when you do have groups like this, you're getting a wide variety of people that literally mm -hmm. just started. And then you have people that have done this a long time. And yes, there is a lot of in between. Um, but all I can think, of when somebody posts something is first of all it takes a lot of courage to post now anywhere nowadays 100 um so i never ever give advice to somebody unless they straight up say like correct hey i worked on this ombre and it looks like crap what can i do i think we need to learn to not say that um because no matter if that tumbler is not pretty as you think it should be they were proud enough to post to it post and it. they yes and so we have to remember that there is a human there that was proud enough about that um it could either be a generic statement um and i hate to say that because a lot of times i am generic um because i'm so busy that i'm not i don't have the time to write, write out a novel anymore like oh my gosh i love how you place the decal to the left and the blue to the right like i just write oh my gosh that's so pretty so i hate to say that because that doesn't mean like i'm lying but when you do see that, you usually do find something that you can compliment. Compliment, yeah. Yeah, it's like seeing an ugly baby. <laughs> right. You just have to say something like, he has the prettiest right. eyes. Right. Like, oh, look at that sweet little thing. <laughs> He's got he the sweet little, little thing. Feet. He just may not be so cute. Right, right, right. <laughs> oh. uh, yeah, I, I agree. It took a lot for them to post the cup. So at least you can find something. I don't like when people try to tell them how to fix something when they didn't ask yeah tell them how to fix it because a lot of people will ask for advice and ask for opinions and ask for okay what can i do differently or they want constructive criticism some people don't and yeah. we all started somewhere. and you know it's kind of a pet peeve of mine like i am a youtuber um youtube can be great youtube can also not be great um but people always also give me advice tumblers it's like i think i know what i'm doing but whatever right. it's kind of annoying right and we all do things so differently sure. like i do what i do for a reason right so um yeah thanks for your advice though <laughs> right thanks for that um okay and then so. the only other question i have is affiliates do you believe in them we both do it so yes so I was actually on the anti-affiliate train for a long time. <laughs> Not that I looked down on anybody. I get why or why people don't do it. The reason why I didn't want to do it is because, um, like, an example, I won't name names, but there was an epoxy company years ago that gave an affiliate code to everybody in their dog. And then every group you went into is like, I love that epoxy. Here's my code. And it became so redundant. You didn't believe anybody. That I was like, wait a minute, but they have a good product. Like, people, then I, people were saying, well, I'm never going to buy that product because all you guys do is sell it to me. It's like, true. <laughs> right. I wanted people to use my product by word of mouth because they loved it. But in this industry, you will get ran over if you don't have other people kind Company of promoting. Product. Yeah, like I, I tried up until just recently. Like, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. But I'm running out of time to pimp myself <laughs> right so but I think I finally... the people that you select I think is really really important I I literally have one code for another company um and it's a 3d printed guy because I love him but everybody who has our codes I either knew them or have watched their lives Cheryl Freeman hey girl she's somebody we love too um not a ton of people have our code or a specific code and we'll go she's from just stick it and we'll share lives back and forth and people will post their lives in our group and her and her husband will sit there making cups and i feel like you should you should know the person which is why you when you put out your thing recently about i'm looking for some affiliates you have to do your research because if you give somebody a code and you're like dang they just posted this and i do not agree with it then it's like well that caused a problem and like for me i had somebody that only happened one time i believe one time bro she posted something on tiktok and i was like oh here we go because then you deal with the backlash you deal with like it, 
It's just, you do need other people to pimp your product. I don't even go on YouTube. So if somebody does have YouTube and they use my product, that's going to benefit me. But also I don't want to push something and make people feel like if you watch a makeup video and they use this, I just reference makeup because I watch makeup videos, but you watch a makeup video and they're constantly referencing this and constantly influencing you to buy it. You're like, oh, and then you get it and it's crap. They're getting paid to say it. Yes. Like you have to truly <laughs> trust your affiliates. I use, wish like, even in our <sighs> industry, it's like, okay, I know that we are easily influenced. I've been influenced 100%. on TikTok where I'm like, dude, I need that makeup. And then I get it. Bro, like, I bought liquid was like because of you four years ago and I used it the first yeah. time a week ago. Like, trust me, I know. <laughs> <laughs> like we're easily influenced, but I also like when I pitch my affiliates, I hand pick them by things. Were they active in the community? Have they used my product before? Because I didn't want it to feel pushed, you know? Sure. Um, and I am a big person of you support me and I support you. So, 100%. um, so I was really picky about that, but it is funny to me that th that is why I didn't do it is because it's like, I don't want to just force people to buy, buy my product. Right. I want them to actually love it, but yeah, don't be too, <laughs> No, it's like don't be too easily influenced like sometimes I'm like there's so many good glitter and vinyl people but you only see the same ones posted it's like we are that right that brainwash that we we only have to buy what everybody else is buying from like this at little one, circle yeah you like venture you, off you, you can't venture thing off with groups. you can't post anything in anybody's groups without getting yelled at you can't um and we're done with our questions so if anybody has questions you want to comment I will be happy to go through them and we can read them. So if you have any questions or you've been letting something percolate, comment it so we can get to it. Um, Cause we're going to wrap it up if we don't have any more, but um, I don't know what I was saying. Easily influenced. No, no, it's gone. Important, apparently. <laughs> No clue. Um, I think somebody on your Instagram, I went to your Instagram, read all the, asked something about rhinestones and oh, okay. how to like not get overwhelmed or something. I'm not a huge rhinestoner. I know Ashley does a little bit as well. I do rhinestones strictly to detox from the Tumblr world. I find it relaxing, but um, it takes one a long of the, time. So it takes yeah, you away it from it. It takes okay. a long time and it's busy hands, busy brain, you know, so you don't have a lot of other thoughts going on. Um, overwhelmed on a tumbler so if somebody said um can you make me a rhinestone tumbler and i said yes i first of all would give them a pretty long week span um like i need eight to ten weeks <laughs> um right. because i don't want to feel like i have to get it done um the other thing why i started um rhinestones a little bit was um you can take rhinestones with you you cannot take glitter and epoxy in your turners so I take anywhere my son has a baseball game or a tournament where I know I'm going to just be outside for hours and hours. I just flop a chair and I take my rhinestones with me and I never overwhelm myself. I will do like, I'll give myself a time limit. Like you are going to work on this tumbler for one hour right. and then you're going to be done. Right. And then I see how much I can get done in an hour or even sometimes just 10 minutes. And then when I'm done, I'm done. Right. So um, you can take them with you. But if you're going to start taking orders for rhinestone tumblers, I would definitely give them a long time unless you thoroughly enjoy doing it eight to 10 hours a day. And Somebody, I think that's, yeah. that, that goes for regular tumblers too, like you said. Yeah. <laughs> and, and they may, you may not have a wait list that is going to take you eight to 10 weeks, but if you are rushed, sometimes the rush tumblers turn out better than oh, yeah. the ones that you spent time on anyway, but never, ever, ever give yourself a deadline that is not attainable not because right. that is so frustrating when the last coat is never your last coat. No. First of all, ever, um, you could have a gnat fly on it. It could fall off the flip and turner. You never know. But that's another thing that I would mention is don't ever tell somebody, Oh, two weeks. If you think it's going to be yes. two weeks, tell them three weeks. Like just don't take on more than don't bite off more than you can chew. Uh, Linda yes. basically said she got a tumbler. The lid was cracked. She told the lady, no words. Like, um, she told the lady it was broken and she said, how is it broken? I took a picture of the lid and I'm waiting for a response. No words. Like, I'm sorry. What do you need from me? So I can, I can from both sides, Linda, thank you for your question from both sides of that one. Um, I was doing a $20, a slot tumbler just to get rid of them. Cause I had a bunch that I needed to put on the shelves and two out of the 20 were cracked. And I know for a fact that Darian and I packaged them, her and I literally sat there, rolled them. We were chit chatting. We were boxing them all up. I know for a fact they were not cracked when they left here. Um, so one, that tells me I need to package it better. And two, um, 
maybe I need to take pictures or videos of cups before they go out. What did I do? I had multiple extras sitting around and it was just a fun $20 slot thing. So I went ahead and sent them another one. I'm pretty sure I refunded both of them too, which I shouldn't have done. But either way, I, I just want the customer to be happy at the end of the day. But taking a picture of it before it ships out would be good. And then yes, Linda, as a business owner, she should have been like, I'm so sorry this happened. What can I do to fix it? Or let me refund your money. If she doesn't want to take the yeah. time to fix it, refund your money. Like, I, but it, you would have to say... watch your own ass and take a picture of it. You yes. know what I mean? Like, <laughs> A lid is a pretty, I would rather replace a lid than somebody say, oh, I just it's cracked. Yeah, it's cracked. It's like, dang, now right. I got to restart. So to me, just a replace lid is an easy the lid. Fix. Yeah, <laughs> right. it's like, it's I'm sorry. Picky. And then just, and then I would probably just say like, I will replace as a courtesy this time, but the next time here's the website to replace your lid. I'd probably do it once and then not do it again. Yeah, good point. Um, uh, Lori, she's one of our locals. Hey, Lori, do you think markets are a good place to start? That's a great question. And a lot of people do vendor events and markets for us personally. That's how we got started. There's a big church next door that my kids go to school there and everything. And before they went to school, that's how we got started. We brought our embroidery machines, lugged them over, and they would ask us to come every single year. We'd have a huge crowd because embroidery is very cool. Like if someone does freeze dried candy and they do it right there, it's very yes. cool. Everybody likes watching things. If they're making your ice cream and they do it, like you like watching that sort of thing. So um, for us, yes. However, where we are now in business. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, we're doing that glitter extravaganza. We're doing that to advertise. We don't pay for marketing, right? So that is our marketing. Yes. You couldn't pay me to so, sit out there and sweat. <laughs> <laughs> no. In my area, I live in Utah, it's a Mormon state, and it's very cheap. Mm -hmm. So everybody and their dog here can make exactly what you make for the same price, you know? To me, it's not worth it in my, in, in my area. I would say, do your research. Um, like something like Pinner's Conference where people are coming from all states. Um, the fee may be higher, but think of it. One time my brother gave me some advice when I said, oh my gosh, I'm spending X, Y, Z to get here and I'm making zero. He said, but will you make that up in a year? Correct. Who's going to know you because of that? That is how we grew our business. We have the same customers we've had for 10 years because of that event that we did that comes back and gets their shirts embroidered or the local cops that get their hats embroidered. We still know people from that event. So I'm, I would highly recommend it. But then when you get to a point where you don't need to go, no, I, yeah. I hate those there are a lot. There are a lot of work. A lot of work. Sitting a lot there of stingy and... people. They think they're yes. going to do a yard sale. It's a yes. craft store, not a yard sale, people. Yes. <laughs> that pisses me off. But um, a couple more questions. Um, you are Awesome. Oh, thank you, Miss Tanya. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Jody said, how do you stay motivated? This is a great question for you because you're very artistic and I think you, you probably have a lot going on <laughs> up there. Um, okay. This is actually, um, a huge struggle of mine. Um, I don't have the overhead that Ashley does. I still run my, I also do hair and nails. I run both of my businesses out of my home. Um, so my brain never stops. <laughs> I don't ever just to go get to go home. I mean, I know Ashley's doesn't as well, but like, even if I'm home and I have an hour, I'm like, oh, I should really be downstairs bottling those up. I should really be, you know, making that cup or whatever. All I can say is most of the time I just have to force myself. Um, I have to put my phone away. I'll turn music on usually really loud. I'm very easily distracted. So I just will sometimes give myself a mental time limit. And if I pass it, it doesn't matter. But I'm like, you have one hour to record three TikToks or you need to start three tumblers today. Um, and I just kind of force myself <laughs> to do it. And then I feel like when you do force yourself, you're like, oh my gosh, I was such a baby. That was only an hour. That was so easy. Yeah, I, <laughs> I need to quit being such a baby. Um, same with creativity. Time and like creativity is kind of contagious. The more you do it, the more you want to do it. Um, so I just literally stay motivated by forcing myself to do it. Just do it and get over it with. And then it usually evolves into, okay, now that you did that, you can go get those glitters packed up or whatever. Yeah. For me, it, really my only motivation is what do I, I just, I just need ideas for lives, right? So um, I'll go on Pinterest. I'll go on yes. in just groups too and just search teacher tumblers or 4th of July tumblers and kind of take those ideas and go, okay, how am I going to make this? 
if you guys watch the live of the peekaboo with the splotchy whatever and we end up putting cheetah spots on it super simple that was from somebody else's cup but it was different but i just took ideas from that, that and was like how do i stay motivated adding new vinyl like when trina comes out with her designer boxes you kind of get motivated from seeing that yeah. oh this is spring themed oh this is western themed and you kind of let things so same thing for us when we come out with new vinyls or new decals it's like oh that's super cute i want to make something so staying motivated and watching other people's lives and like this we're doing teacher appreciation week is coming up so i went to dollar tree and got a ton of stuff i looked up some videos i looked up tiktoks i was like okay what are people doing for teacher appreciation week so looking at other people's content for sure but planning things out too like i started putting the um like what the cup was on there so I can kind of stay a little bit more organized because I'd spray paint and be like what was I going to do with that mm -hmm. so but looking at other people's stuff looking through pictures in our own group other groups and finding something that is motivating yeah. to you whether it's yes. the season whether it's I think you said oh gosh like it, I feel like I vaguely remember you saying something of you can find inspiration in anything yes like you were outside <laughs> looking at a tree you were doing a live of something what did what was that i'm what trying to a little remember bit of advice what it was but i don't even know where i got that advice i've taken art classes and stuff over the years but i literally look at everything as inspiration it could just be a color yes. palette um like i recently made my husband a tumbler and i think i got inspiration from like a digital card Hi, sis, what do you need? No, what? Okay, in a minute. Oh, my, she says my friend's pretty, Ashley. Oh, <laughs> I think your mom's the prettiest, but thanks. Um, but yeah, I literally look at everything. Um, this sounds really weird, but fabric. I don't use a lot of fabric, but I use it as inspiration. Um, a lot of times on your Facebook, those ads will pop up for mm -hmm. like t-shirts. And I look at t-shirts. I know that they're um, mock-ups, mock sure. but I look at that. Um, these are just some random things that I've found inspiration. Um, I think I made a Tumblr off of somebody's, I'm going on vacation post. It was like a beach thing. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> How right. do you make a cute Tumblr? And I kind of just twisted it and made it my own. So I literally look at everything as inspiration. Yeah, I think I think a lot of us have that writer's block whatever you call it we all get that and feel that like okay well I don't feel like doing anything this week or haven't seen anything that's spiked my interest so sparked my interest so I I definitely think looking at other people's pictures blah 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 and all that um let's see any other questions how do you stay motivated then Roxanne said she's in Utah too woohoo oh, how do you find great. markets Marisol Facebook marketplace or just yeah everywhere uh, I think it long, I take it longer. I think about it longer than it actually took to do. Leah, I think I missed a previous comment. I'm sorry, but I don't even see it. Um, always remember why you started and let that be your motivation. 100% Miss Cheryl. Yeah, it's, though, so that's what you need to remember in the darkest days. For me, it is, I ain't going back to be a nurse, but also <laughs> like Trina and I, talk about this too no matter what there's always going to be a newbie and there's another question about oversaturated yeah um, do you guys feel like the that. tumblr world is becoming oversaturated meaning they are there are way, way too many people making and selling i i do and i don't like i think there's enough customers for all of us i don't think this is people are going to do this and it's not going to stick for them forever you're going to have the successful people and then you're going to have people who fall off like it, it is what it is i don't ever think there is too many people for us to invite new ones. Like I really don't think, and, and we've gone through all of these fads and these phases and these cool things, but it's going to be new to somebody. Like I just did a tattoo tumbler for the first time. Rebecca did this like three years ago. I just did it for the first time and I've been doing tumblers. So yeah, I, I've never done tattoo tumbler. <laughs> like I never did a rhinestone tumbler till I tried it. Like Utah's very, very oversaturated. Roxanne yeah, said. it is right, because but, everybody thinks they can do it. Yeah. And then you still have successful people like Trina. So I definitely think just don't ever give up. Don't, once you start getting in your own head, it's no bueno. Yeah, I do definitely think the market, okay, like you look at the Facebook groups and they're like, wow, how can I pe compete with 40,000 people? Right, or 63,000. Or right. 60 or whatever. Um, I don't mean this to be rude, but when you get into anything anything. I've said this about hair. You kind of have it or you don't. Yeah. 
Like a lot of stuff isn't like you can put on a Tumblr and you can figure out epoxy, but you either have take down or you don't. Right. So those people are going to get frustrated and they're going to move on to something else to try to find where their place is. So I feel like if you really want to stay steady in this craft and make a business out of it, just stay consistent and work on your end result. Um, this is a little rude, but I have purchased tumblers before from a lot of people and same I have been disappointed <laughs> where I'm like, wait a minute, I'm so hard on myself because there was one little teeny piece of glitter sticking up and this is it, you know? So I think if you perfect your craft, um, you will always stick around because those people, they might sell a lot of tumblers at the beginning and then they're going to, these, their customers and their customer base is going to figure out that there is a better option. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. I bought, I buy tumblers from people all the time. I'm, I'm just, a, I'm a tumbler hoarder. Like it, I just, <laughs> <laughs> what we do. I don't know. I have a whole shelf of them over there. Like, yeah. So any other questions? I think we're going to wrap it up here. Cheryl said, go live. The world is huge. Yeah, I totally agree. I wouldn't stop yeah. doing it. Everyone does it anyway. Just hop on the bandwagon. I, I would say that's one thing I'm really bad at is going live. Um, most of the time, because I look like a hot mess, I'm throwing on my hair and some sweat and I'm in epoxy and stuff all day. And then I'm like, well, nobody's going to want to see me. The other thing I think we overthink about is um, what to promote or what to make. Mm -hmm. I think about all the time, like, well, I just don't want to make a split tumbler that's been done 50 million times. But it is pretty amazing that you might make a split tumbler and I might make a split tumbler, but they learn a little bit something different from you, even though Each we were time. both doing it the or same. You do a template so, and I just freehand it because I wing it or yeah, you a different like, color and it looks completely different. Yeah. Yes. Completely so different. people just want to see. You. Um, and then Candy asked one question and she said, why do people get upset at you when asking questions to learn? Some people post pictures because, and they don't want to teach you. Some people post yeah. pictures and they just want recognition and they want, oh my gosh, your cup is so beautiful. And they're not in it to help people. There are people all over like that. And then also if you're posting, if someone posted a cup and you're not like, oh my gosh, that's so beautiful. Would you mind sharing where the template is? Some people just say, how'd you make that? That is, yes, that is. Rude. I would always say like being in more of the teacher limelight, well, I would say mm -hmm. I am in, that's kind of a little bit of a pet peeve of mine. Like, can you at least just compliment my work first? Right. Before you start. <laughs> and now I don't, Candy's not like that. I'm just saying that in general, a lot yeah. of people are like that. You will look at a, yeah. a, a hundreds of comments and people are like, where'd you get your vinyl? How'd you make this? What size cup did you use? Not, wow, that's really beautiful, man. You're quite the artist. You, there, you could think of 17 different ways to say that's would beautiful. You mind sharing where, what technique right. you used. I would probably Correct. answer, but I'm going to not going to lie. If you just blurt out, where did, Where'd what you pen did you from? use? Yeah. I won't, I won't respond because I just think, it's you know what, rude. that's kind of rude. Right. You, you <laughs> yeah. Like you can at least it. tell me. me yeah. Like day, I love that Tumblr. Yes. Yeah. I agree. So, but yes, at the same point, I also have respect for people that just want to share our work. Obviously when we make something beautiful, there are times that we just want to share because we're proud. Right. If you're like me, I'm the only artsy craftsy person in my whole family. So if I show my mom a Tumblr or my sister, they're like, cool. What well, right. I'm like, well, that's like, do you know how long that took no. me? Do you understand yeah, like, the love that went into this cup? Yeah. No. Yeah, don't. it's like, no, it took me like right. three damn days. Right. right. But when you post it with like-minded people, they know that's more of your work. And then they yeah. will say, that is so awesome. I bet that took a lot of time. So I also respect the fact that they don't want to share. I, I do understand from a learning perspective how that can be frustrating. So I see both sides. And just know that somebody is probably going to replicate it and make it and they'll be willing to share it anyway. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> I do a lot of exclusive tutorials in my paid group. Correct. And as I still have to post that Tumblr people to know that I offer that in my group, right. but no fail, somebody will try to come replicate it and do it anyways. So you just kind of have to be prepared for that mentally. Yep. So just a reminder to everybody in the description of this video, all of Trina's information is there, her Patreon, her group, her Etsy, everything is posted there. You will, you're still doing TumblrCon. You're a teacher, correct? I, I am. Okay. I'm Trina is really still going to be in Texas next mm -hmm. June. It is in June. June 20, 21st through 21st, something. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Trina will be in Texas for TumblrCon. AB is a vendor. She's teaching a class. 
but we will be a vendor at Maglitter Extravaganza in Orlando in July. So just reminding you guys of that. And if you have any questions or want to continue asking, if you asking questions, if you didn't happen to catch the live comment below, we will do our best to answer yes. questions and get to them. I, I really think we covered a lot of stuff and I hope it was helpful and I hope you appreciate the transparency and just two business women <laughs> getting together, <laughs> chatting about stuff that's not really talked about often. Yeah, so, it's true. It's not. Yeah, people, people just, yeah. Thank you, Taylor, for the hearts. All right, guys. Well, if you're done, I'm done. I'm going to head home. All right. Okay. Yeah. Well, Everybody thank you for have doing a great this. night. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right. Bye. See ya. Bye.